What's up, y'all? Welcome back to a 24-7 Smooth Jazz Radio. I'm your host, Sudo Wudo. It's been a hot minute to have done that gag, huh? Injury Reserve. Not exactly a name that your radio-addicted soccer mom would recognize. But in the underground music scene, the name Injury Reserve carries some weight, as an extremely talented and hardworking hip-hop trio. The group has experienced a lot of success in their relatively short time together, give or take seven years, and every ounce of that success is well-deserved. I've been meaning to make a video on Injury Reserve for a while, but it always felt unfinished to me, because only until recently did we know where the Injury Reserve story was going to go. But this will make sense as storytelling progresses. So, sit back with some popcorn and a soft drink as I tell a tale of three men who have become legends in the underground hip-hop community for their hustle, their fire, and their hunger. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I present to you the story of Injury Reserve. Injury Reserve is a hip-hop group based in Arizona and consists of rappers Richie with a T, Steppa J. Groggs, and producer Parker Corey. The band's origin story begins with Richie with a T and Parker Corey. Richie would be rapping and looking to release some solo material when a mutual friend of theirs introduced Richie to Parker and a friendship would be born. They would work together on solo music for Richie when a new player would join the game. Richie created a mixtape that Parker produced and he would ask Groggs to feature on one of the songs. And with the positive vibes from the boys and a bright future ahead of them, the three would go on to be dubbed Injury Reserve. Not much is known about the band's earlier works, but what we do know is they released their full holistic project on April 30th, 2013, titled Depth Chart. This would be the first taste anyone ever got of Injury Reserve as a holistic unit. I've only listened to a few songs here and there because this is kind of a hard album to find, but it's a tight 15 tracks and if you want to hunt it down for yourself, be my guest. After a bit of toiling, Injury Reserve would release their first EP, a bit easier to find entitled Cooler Colors, released on June 18th, 2014. From my listens, Cooler Colors is a pretty solid EP, being that they were relatively unknown at the time. The Kanye West influence is pretty blatant on this, but I'd recommend checking it out. It's only a crisp 19 minutes. They would gain popularity by performing in friends' living rooms to small audiences and by word of mouth, and the help that they would receive from the internet would give them a significant amount of exposure. The hard work and hype would accumulate to the release of their debut mixtape on July 21st, 2015, live from the dentist office. From a pretty sizable rub from the different spots on the internet and a large one from Anthony Fantano, more eyes than ever have been affixed to the group's music. The name of the mixtape comes from how they recorded it. It was recorded, well, above a dentist's office. Something that I don't see a lot of people refer to when looking into Injury Reserve's success, but for being an unsigned group, they had some really impressively made music videos. Songs from the tape like Whatever Dude, Washed Up, Everybody Knows, and TTKV have a very high production value and look really professional. And speaking of the tape, this was a great debut outing for the group. Tracks like Yo are hype, energetic, and frankly fun. A track that you'd put on the ox and people would not think twice. Whatever Dude is a chill jazz rap track with subtle rumbling 808s and dripping with swagger from both men's vocals. 45 is a pretty slept on song in my opinion, being one of my personal favorite instrumentals off this project. A calm yet happy vibing track fit for riding your bike at sundown. Condensing this album down to an album for the summer. Some people's criticism for this record is that, being that they're so relatively young and new in the game, and this being their first true cohesive release, it does seem a bit amateurish, I do agree with this, but for the most part, I appreciate the homemade nature of this record. It gives it some texture and character, but not all the instrumentals here are winners, to me anyway, but still, most of these are bussin'. Groggs is always on his shit, killing it, but the vocal stylings of Richie would continue to improve as his career goes on, mostly in the hook department. But Live from the Dentist's Office is a very respectable first outing from the group. Now, the world is watching what these fellas from Phoenix got next for us. Well, what do you do when you leave the dentist's office? You gotta floss. A year and a half after, live from the dentist's office, on December 15th, 2016, Injury Reserve would release their second official mixtape, Floss. Now, the common consensus for Floss is that it's everything live from the dentist's office was, but done better. And yes, those are my thoughts as well. Banger after banger after banger on here. It's like everyone went to the hard factory and robbed that place blind. Grog's verses somehow got even better than they were from live from the dentist's office. Richie kicks it up a gear and delivers some of the group's catchiest and best hooks. And Parker's production was starting to come into its own, and he popped out these banger instrumentals for the other boys to lose their shit over. That might have been my most cohesive sentence I've said in my entire life. 
The opener, Oh Shit, is one of their most popular songs, and for good reason. This song has chopped and screwed piano melodies and these hardest nails 808s and drums, with Richie screaming the chorus, Oh Shit Indeed. Girl with the Gold Wrist is a banger in its own right, with Parker effortlessly pulling off this hard, plucking guitar beat that Richie and Grogs float over perfectly. Not only do they prove they can write bangers on bangers, but they also get introspective and get just as much energy in that sense. Keep on Slippin' featuring Vic Mensa might be my favorite track off Floss. The beat has this depressing yet hopeful vibe with one of Grog's best verses and Vic Mensa. For all the shit he gets, he killed it here. If you want to hear more detailed thoughts on Floss and Live from the Dentist's Office, I review them over on my Patreon exclusive series, I Will Listen to Shit, so that will be linked at the top right if you want to support the channel and get some cool stuff in the process. Not really a plug, actually kinda is, just worked in the situation so I'm running with it. Injury Reserve was at the top of the world in this moment. They accomplished something not many people do in the music industry. They topped themselves. If there wasn't pressure on them before to drop more fire, the pressure's on now. So again, where do we go from here? Well. Where does one go after the dentist tells them to floss? You steal a car. Yeah, not everything is teeth themed, guys. Injury Reserve's first EP since Cooler Colors, Drive It Like It's Stole, and it was released on September 27th, 2017. They announced this EP in a Pigeons and Plans interview, and the hype was on for this release. And it arrived. This, personally, is my favorite Injury Reserve project. Bold, I know, but come on, man, this shit rocks. I tight seven tracks, all killer, no filler. The intro to this album, 10 tenths, might be my favorite injury reserve song, I think. Jake, you're dripping with these hot takes today, brother. 10 tenths is so perfectly minimalist with just an 808 and some synths, and it rocks so hard. Richie and Grog sound cold blooded on this, and it just helps how intimate the sound is. I can't say enough good things about this song. See You Sweat is injury reserve doing what injury reserve does best making a banger for the club. Everyone is on point here, vocally and instrumentally. Put this shit on the club and you'll get some bitches grinding on your dick. Did I really write that? And the song North Pole is a close second to my favorite injury reserve song of all time. This distorted and reverse guitar loop is so beautiful and haunting with these glitching vocals making the song sound ghastly. Groggs does what he does best and so does Parker, but I see this as Richie's shiny moment. To hear the words struggle to escape his mouth is honestly heartbreaking, but amazing. Now after two mixtapes, two EPs, doing it all by themselves, managing to remain unsigned all these years, they felt the time has come to officially sign to a label and release their debut album. On May 17th, 2019, Injury Reserve would release their debut studio album under Seneca Village Records, simply titled Injury Reserve. Now, up until this point, Injury Reserve was labeled as jazz rap, but with the self-titles released, that has seemingly been thrown out the window in favor for being classified as experimental hip-hop. If you want to hear me talk about this record more, I featured it in one of my videos, A Guide to Experimental Hip-Hop, so check that out and give me some views. Bang, the plug machine's going crazy today. Now, I started my Injury Reserve journey with Drive It Like It's Stolen. I was a huge fan, and when they released the first single, Jawbreaker, and announced the album, I was hype as fuck with more and more hype coming with each single's release. This looked to be on track to be one of the albums of 2019 for me. Upon first release, I was a bit let down when listening to the whole album. It felt the singles far outweighed the deeper cuts on here, and this record is known for the infamous rap song tutorial, so it was a bit mixed for me. Until I revisited it about 9 months later, and I kept liking it the more and more I listened to it. Jawbreaker was the perfect single to hype this album up. It's so weirdly perfect in every way. This xylophone clap beat was just made so amazing by Parker's production skills, and every single person on here kills it. Richie, Grogs, and the vocal guests Rico Nasty and Proteins. Jailbreak the Tesla is another one of the most popular songs, with more insane production by Parker sampling a kalimba in actual car noises, and Amine's verse is really fire, oozing with the type of swagger that this kind of beat needs. And the song Wax On is the boys mixing the old with the new, experimental production but classic flows. A great song made even better by the guest feature by Freddie Gibbs. I don't know how the fuck you convinced Freddie Gibbs to get on a beat like this, but I commend you because that was fire. But the results are in, and people are convinced Injury Reserve is underground hip-hop's best kept secret. After the release of self-titled, Injury Reserve would release four singles not associated with any albums or mixtapes. HPNGC featuring JPEG Mafia in Code Orange, yes that Code Orange, Hoodwinked, Waste Management, and Rock and Roll. Which I feel these songs get overlooked when looking back on the group's discography. These songs rock, I highly recommend giving these a look. Now, at this point, if you've been following the group closely, you know what I'm about to say next. On June 30th, 2020, Injury Reserve announced on their social media that Grogs had passed away. I remember exactly where I was when I found this out, 
and the feeling in the room and on the internet holistically was somber to say the least. Shock, denial, and just grief took over everyone in the community. The news was just so tragic to hear about Groggs, such an amazing lyricist, and I'm fairly certain he's going to go down in history as a legend in his craft. Gone way too soon, rest in peace, Steppa J Groggs. Steppa spelled with one P by the way. Now you can see where the conversation started circulating about the future of the group. So many questions, is this it? Is there any more? Would Richie and Parker even want to continue? The future of Injury Reserve was up in the air, and the only ones who knew the next move were Richie and Parker. Now, this is where our story ended, because I didn't know where the group was going next. But on August 10th, 2021, we'd receive an update. On September 15th, 2021, Injury Reserve would be releasing their new album, By the Time I Get to Phoenix. Side note, this album cover is in contention for album cover of the year for me. This is just amazing. Along with the announcement, they also released a statement, some background on the recording process, the name, and a touching dedication to Grogs. I don't want to read the whole thing, but you can pause the video and read it yourself. As of me recording this video that you're watching right now, the album has not been released yet, but it's up right now as you're watching this, so go listen to it immediately. But what has been released for me was a single titled Knees, this slow plucking guitar asynchronously to slow drums and skipping hi-hats. It's perfectly weird and somber for an oncoming storm. Some people seem to be mixed on the direction here, but I honestly love this song. And they also sampled Black Midi's song Sweater on this track. And the other single they released is a track titled Superman That. This one is even more insane sounding than Knees, but even better. This electronic, left field bass, math rock, hip hop inspired track that merges all of these genres together perfectly into this insane combination. And they sample Black Country New Road on this song. All they need is squid and shame and they will have the complete white boy summer bingo board. If this is the album's direction going forward, I am so excited for this to be released. Like I said, the album hasn't released for me as of recording this, but I'm predicting this is going to be an extremely difficult listen knowing about the circumstance surrounding it. So with all that said, I feel Injury Reserve will go down in underground hip hop history as a difference maker. They've made some incredibly unique and energetic songs. Whether that energy is hype, happy, sad or introspective they were masters of their craft and they managed to rise up in the ranks totally unsigned selfishly i have to say i would love to hear more music in the future but if by the time i get to phoenix is the last we're gonna get i'm okay with that because i know the group will go out on top yeah didn't expect for this to get that real did you but yeah, unfortunately, that's life, and all we can do is celebrate Grog's life. Uh, when they first announced the news, they also gave out a GoFundMe link to support his family. That will be linked in the description if you feel so compelled to donate. But yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. I'll keep the outro brief here, but special thank you to the Pigeons and Planes interview they did, getting a bit more in-depth about their work, and seeing them just being candid friends was really cute, I have to say. I find myself watching this at least once a month like clockwork. Uh, go check that out along with their No Jumper interview. This really got into the small details about their formation, their past, their two mixtapes, along with some great conversations. It's on YouTube or SoundCloud. I highly recommend giving this a listen if I've piqued your curiosity in this video. But yeah, I always appreciate you watching my videos. That shit is just so cool. Seeing people say how much they like my content. It just makes my day, and if you don't know who Injury Reserve is, well, now you know, and I envy you, because you get to listen to their discography for the first time. All my extracurriculars will be in the description if your curiosity is piqued. But yeah, that's all. Thank you for watching. And remember, as long as you spell Steppa with one P, then you're all set. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And have a pleasant day.